everyone. Welcome back to A Message of Hope. My name is Monet Souza, and today it is a great joy to be joined with Catherine Hadro and Dr. Dan Keebler, who are the host of the Purposeful Lab podcast. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks Thank for having me. Of course, of course. So the two of you have this new podcast, and I've watched multiple episodes. I've also read the articles that are on your website that you have there. Um, can you just maybe start us off with, either one of you may answer, um, where was the spark and the desire to start this podcast? How did it all come about? Yeah, uh, so the the podcast fl flowed out of a, a grant that, that we had to address sort of the the sort of dichotomy, particularly that young people have between sort of science and uh, religion. A lot of people think the more you learn about science, the more likely you are to recognize that uh, God is uh, superfluous. You don't need to believe in God. Science can explain everything. I mean, there's that sort of dominant meme in our culture, I think. And and we're trying to figure out what's the best way to reach uh, people with with this message. How how do we go about doing it? And uh, we uh, you know. Yeah, the idea of you know a, a podcast where you have scientists, philosophers, and theologians, but you also have a journalist who can sort of uh, bring this stuff down to the level um, where people are at, where people are struggling uh, with. And so, um, we we wanted to to address issues that you know I've heard from students in my twenty years of teaching uh, about you know how do you reconcile this with that? Or I have a friend who no longer goes to church because of X, you know, they think, you know, um, you know, evolution is incompatible with the church or things like that, these scientific issues or um, that, that people have and, and to see, uh, approach it from a different, uh, a different uh, level, a different view um, to, to show that, you know, really science is uh, uh, very synergistic with the Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really this kind of natural outgrowth of everything that is beautiful that is happening at the Manja Center and Purposeful Universe. And again, with Dan and I, it's this unique opportunity for a journalist and a scientist to come together and have these conversations. And, you know, these conversations are for everyone. It doesn't matter where you're at in your faith journey, it doesn't matter uh, your knowledge and awareness of science and, and what have you. And we wanted to meet people where they're at and as you know, a lot of people are at podcasts. And so that's why we're on all the podcast platforms and on YouTube as well, because we just want to make this as accessible as possible. Right. No. And I think it's necessary too, because, you know, I know we had a brief moment to even just discuss this before starting the interview, but there's so much, especially with my audience members who are just struggling with, okay, what is truth and where can we find the truth? And so oftentimes People are separating science and the faith, but, you know, myself as well, going to Franciscan University, just seeing how that blends well together, it was such a moment of realization of, okay, these are supposed to go hand in hand and not be separated. So what is, you know, the gateway of these conversations that you're hoping to be had? I know you both have alluded to it a little bit, but what do you believe your podcast will lead listeners into? Is it going to be leading them into maybe more pro-life stances, more of a uh, realization of what the creation story really was about when we read it in Genesis? What is the hope once listeners stumble across your podcast? What do you want that to be? Um, what's the trajectory, I guess, for like the next steps once the episode is done? Yeah, I think, um, you know, from my perspective as a scientist, I think a lot of times uh, the, the, the people see, well, um, uh, science isn't related to faith. I'm not good at science. I'm not really interested in that. And I hear that it might take me away from my faith. What I want is is to you know talk about scientific topics that spark people's natural curiosity. You know, how did the universe get to be the way it is? How do planets form? How 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 you know uh, you know uh, for, for me, I learn from all these scientists that that we have on. What makes humans unique from a biological perspective? A lot of these things, these topics that are very interesting, just out of innate curiosity that humans have to explore, but then also to see that these things spur very interesting theological and philosophical questions that are fun to talk about within a you know a catholic worldview like the catholic worldview doesn't squash questions it, it just sort of frames how is the best way to ask these questions that we can actually get to to the truth 
and, and science is one way of looking at it. Philosophy and theology bring a different view, but we're all looking at, at one truth and how do these things all fit together? And often they don't fit, you know, it's not obvious because we're, we're meant to struggle with some of these mysteries and and, and that makes it exciting. I, I think it's the scientific discovery, the theological discovery, the philosophical discovery that goes in into this. Um, and, and people see, oh, wow, no, scientific uh, uh, data and, and, and new knowledge actually can augment my faith and, and, and fits in with a, a Catholic worldview of we're discovering God's creation and the order and beauty there, uh, as, as Catherine likes to talk about the purpose of not only the universe, but our purpose, right? Mm -hmm. I will say, Dan, I don't know about you, but one of the things that has struck me the most in our conversations is when you'll have a scientist like world renowned, you know, say, and here's a question that science can't answer, you know, and, and just having that, seeing that to the limits of science, which I don't think is talked a lot about in our world as well. That's been pretty eye opening. Um, and I think just from a very practical standpoint, from my perspective, Monet, I think there's something about getting outside of ourselves and having these conversations when you look at the abundant order in the universe, you know, yes, from the galaxies to nature, to animals, to our human design, it is really awe-inspiring. And it really, I think, forces everyone when we're hearing about this to realize, wow, there's really an intentional design and purpose to every single thing. And what does that mean for me? And as I talked about before, I really it's not a surprise if I were to say that we're really in a crisis of purpose today. There were there, this new report that came out devastating a few days ago. We just had the highest suicide rate in the history of the United States. You know, there, it's a tragedy and people are really grappling with what is my purpose. Um, and, I, and one of my hopes that these conversations will spark this awe and wonder in us all and get us outside of ourselves. Yes. And even to, you know, the episodes I listened to, I and mean, granted, I did not do very well in my science classes, <laughs> but listening to these episodes, they are very much packed in with so much knowledge and truth where I would feel very comfortable sending this to my, my friend who's very seeped in the secular world. They're sending this to my friend who's grappling with the faith, who may be atheist, who may be agnostic, all these different things. So is there a specific audience that maybe the two of you had in mind when praying and discerning on the structure of this podcast, what you would talk about? Is it is it called to bring in people of all faith backgrounds? And I'm sure I probably have an inclination what the answer would be, but that was just the immediate response. I'm like, whoa, this is great. This podcast is hosted by two Catholics, but the content I know can be widespread so much more throughout. So what, what was the thought process with yeah, who your audience is. Yeah, I, I think our, our audience is is uh, you know a, a diverse, and I think what like Catherine had mentioned, we want. Um, to do talk about the best of the science we don't want to water it down or just talk about a little bit of as but we, we want to make it accessible so people can understand i think you know sort of the the scientific process the beauty of scientific discovery the immensity of the universe the complexity of of life and all of those things um and, and that particularly in today's culture science has such an elevated voice uh, an outsized voice i would argue <laughs> um in terms of what we should do and what we shouldn't do but leading with the science and then reflecting on it right science as Catherine mentioned and a lot of our guests point out can't answer all these questions that that these deep purposeful meaning questions that that we have but it does raise a lot of questions um uh, philosophical and theological questions that require some some good theological and philosophical discussions uh, about and so we bring in theologians and philosophers on our podcast not just scientists to talk about what are the questions that you know the fact that we live in a very highly ordered universe that has this sort of specific structure what does that tell us I mean, what can we reflect philosophically or theologically and so our audience is, that we're trying to, to 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 reach are those people that are open about these things that are struggling with these questions, whether they're Catholic or non-Catholic. You know, obviously both of uh, Catherine and I are both Catholic. We come <laughs> to these questions with a certain sort of worldview, a certain belief system. But I think anybody that's human <laughs> that's interested in these questions of purpose and, and meaning, you know, that are at sort of we're finding a crisis here now. And if people think that the universe is just meaningless and science tells you the universe is meaningless. 
First of all, science can tell you no such thing. They can describe the universe, but whether it has meaning and purpose goes well beyond the science. But if somebody thinks that, they're not going to, you know, that's why the suicide rates are, are, are high. People think, well, if there's no purpose in any of this, what's the purpose in my life? So it's interesting how our own lives, I think, are connected with our scientific understanding of the world. And, and that's one of the things that, that we try to get across to uh, all individuals on this podcast. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like this podcast really is for truth seekers, you know, like Dan said, people who are grappling with big questions and open and exploring and the church encourages us to ask big questions, right? The church is not afraid of asking these big questions. And as Dan said, doesn't quelch it down either. So I'd say, you know, this podcast is for truth seekers and it doesn't matter your journey. I know for me, I'm not super eloquent in talking about oftentimes the compatibility of a faith in science all the time, but I can send an episode to someone, maybe a friend who is maybe more seeped into the secular world, as you said, and just trust, okay, maybe I'm not so articulate in this, but listen to this scientist who is at Harvard and, oh yeah, happens to be a Christian and listen to what she has to say on this. That's a good point. And even to, this is something that I was wondering, like, okay, if there was one question I would want to know um, just from the two of you, and especially where all my guests, we tend to talk about their own personal faith journeys. I figured I would throw one of those questions in for the two of you here, but how has science shaped your own personal faith lives? Catherine, you want to take that one? <laughs> yeah, you can take <laughs> that one. I for days on it, but, but. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll say this. I, I'm really excited to hear what Dan has to say on this because I feel like there's so much more we're still kind of learning about each other in, in that perspective as well. When it comes to science, I mean, I'll just say this, so much of my career and work has been focused on the dignity of human life. I mean, my background, much of it is dedicated to the pro-life issue and speaking about the dignity of the unborn specifically and how science, the more you dig into science, the further science supports that life, the thriving life in utero. Um, and so I'd say maybe through that avenue, that's kind of what immediately comes to mind, that avenue and learning more about and focusing on the dignity of unborn life and how science supports that has helped me to further examine the dignity of human life at all stages. Um, and even just kind of grappling with when you're in between different seasons, professionally, personally, what have you, how there's dignity in that as well. Um, it's really, I'd say that's been um, something that God and I have been talking a lot about. Beautiful. Yeah, I great. I, you know, as I was actually an English major as an undergraduate and then sort of stumbled into science and a career uh, in, in my master's and PhD. Uh, but I uh, really stumbled into it, but they became intoxicated with science and particularly like the ability, I thought, to know everything, right? We can understand every little aspect of a cell and how it works. I'm a cell molecular biologist. And so we can understand the biochemistry. We know how the cell works. And, it, you know, it, I think that's something that people think when they start graduate school and they have these heady ideas, but then you realize how little we actually know. And that's the over, <clears throat> over the course of my career, I've become more and more struck by how little we actually fully understand how a cell works, how the universe works. We have a lot of great theories and a lot of great information, but at the end of the day, there's a mystery there. Um, and that 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 really, I think, resonates to me with the same the way um, I understand my faith and, and theology. There's a lot that I know, but there's there's a mystery I'm never going to be able to penetrate. And I think there's this nice parallel between science and scientific discovery. We try to understand the universe, and we're never going to fully understand the universe, where there's always going to be a mystery. But it's this vast thing that we're trying to understand, just like our faith. It's this vast thing we're trying to understand, but we're never going to fully understand it on this side of the grave. You know, it's 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 a mystery we're trying to penetrate. And I think 
that it's interesting. I think scientific discovery, it leads you often to, if you are humble enough to recognize this is a mystery and you're, 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 you're never fully going to explain it, 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 it makes it easier for me to, 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 to realize, you know, the, the synergy with faith and like, you know, uh, and the, the, the analogy of God's creation sort of leads us in the same way as, as, as understanding God. Um, so that, that's something that I've appreciated and I've become more and more humble about what science can know. Um, and, and, and I'm a scientist, so I, I, I love science. I, I think it can know a lot, but but to recognize the limits of science, um, whether it's just uh, the you know, science can't do philosophy or it's just that there's certain things that because of our experiments and our techniques, we'll never be able to fully understand scientifically, you know? Yeah, well, thank you both for sharing that. Um, it's, I don't even think I would know how to eloquently answer that own question if, if it was asked for myself, but yeah, it's just beautiful to see the work that you both are doing and the necessity of it. And like I said, I I know there will be Catholics who will be listening and in, enjoying this podcast, but I also have so much more confidence that you're going to reach people who are not even like dipping their toe in Catholicism yet. Just that was what I was struck by um, over this past week leading up to this interview with the two of you. So where can people go to listen to your episodes. And even I will say for someone who loves learning about the different learning styles and learning intelligences, you both have hit like every nail on the head. You can watch your interviews, you can listen, you can read the articles. So there's so many different ways to gain this knowledge that the two of you are helping um, really put out for the public to read, to listen to. So where can people go to check out the Purposeful Lab? Go to your favorite podcast platform. You will find us there. And after you listen, I encourage you to leave a review and a rating as well. But if you prefer watching your podcast, just search Purposeful Lab on YouTube and everything related to the podcast, go to majacenter.com. You can find everything there. There's even a way to submit questions. So you may hear your question read aloud on our podcast that Dr. Dan Keebler will have to answer. That's wonderful. Well, Again, with the work that you're doing, maybe because we didn't start in a prayer, we can end in a prayer. So let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good and gracious God, I thank you for the gift of Catherine and Dr. Dan and all the good work that they are doing. Lord Jesus Christ, continue to prompt them in the ways that you wish for knowledge to be brought about, um, especially when it comes to faith and science. May their work continue to be wrapped in your, your veil, Mother Mary, and all listeners, may they be open to the truth that they are presenting. May the work just be good in your eyes, God. And Mother Mary, we ask your intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary. Mary. Mother of God, pray for us pray for sinners, sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you both so much again for taking the time to chat with me, and I will be sure to leave all the information of where people can go to listen to your podcast in the description down below. God bless you both, Catherine, Dr. Dan. Thank you. And everyone who's watching, we'll see you again next week for a new episode. God bless.